All right, time now for hot picks, and we are choosing stocks from one of the most beaten up sectors on the S&P 500, but one that has seen a lot of M&A recently. Today, another example, Roche buying a company in that hot category of weight loss and diabetes drugs. Eden Rahim, portfolio manager and option strategist at Next Edge Capital joins me. Thanks so much for joining us. Thanks for having me. Amber. So before we get to your picks, let's mm -hmm. just talk about the environment. Has it been tough out there to be a biotech investor? Yeah, it's it's been actually a among the toughest ever. So we've had three consecutive down years in biotech. In its young 42-year history, it's only the second time that that's happened. Oh, wow. The good news is, the silver lining is, is that after that experience, between 92 and 94, biotechs rose 63% the next year and 1,000% into the 2,000 top. We don't need that. <laughs> We're stock pickers. We just need it not to go down. And that's a big help. Stock picking will pick up after because that. Because the themes this year have been pretty clear. Uh, obviously, diabetes, weight loss, drugs will take you to the moon. Yep. And, um, you know, if you're developing and working on some maybe broad uh, applications for cancer treatments, yes. you can get deals done. Is that it? That's kind of the only themes out there, right, yeah, that it, work? It, it, it's, it's been limited. Um, it's on a stock-by-stock -stock basis. However, what we are seeing is, you know, there is substantial M&A. We've had five of our companies acquired this year. We think that's just a start because the market's not paying for these companies and the optionality in the pipeline of these companies, big buyer farmers stepping in and buying these companies. So obviously the GLP-1 GIP space has been white hot, as you pointed out the acquisition this morning. Um, but there are other opportunities, there are other players in that space. And and the, the names that you're picking, well, one is, is sort of a large cap biotech, yeah. but they're smaller in scale. But could you not just go with like a Pfizer or a Merck? Like these stocks are, they're huge pharmaceutical companies that are trading down and dirty. Yeah, and, and part of the reason- And yields now. That, well, exactly, great yields. They're like we talked about dogs of the Dow type stocks. Um, there's definitely value there. And I think for large cap institutional shareholders, uh, investors, I think that's a good area that you will see it because it's in, those moves down in giants like uh, Merck and Pfizer and and Bristol Myers have been amplified by a couple of things. One is you just buy Lilly, yeah. you ignore these, right? The second thing is, is that these companies need to do M&A. They need to rebuild their pipeline. They face major generics. Big drugs like Keytruda faces um, loss of exclusivity in 2027, 20, 28. This, this stuff is all weighing on it. So they need to go out and buy companies. So let's talk about sort of a larger cap company that is under pressure, Biogen. Um, is this one of these companies that needs to go out and do deals? What do you see as the catalyst here? So Biogen is the oldest of a young sector, which is, um, it's been around for about 40 years. It's had two prior periods where it's meandered for eight or 10 years while it waits for a new drug, a new blockbuster to emerge. So it's done for 10 years. It's meandered between low 200s and high 400s. And it has a new drug, the first disease modifying drug, Lecambi, that is launched this year and will become a five to $10 billion drug in the years treats ahead. This treats? This treats Alzheimer's. Alzheimer's. And what it does, yes, it's, yeah. an, it's a monoclonal antibody that um, binds to um, amyloid beta in the brain and P tau and removes it. And do we know yet about how it's going to be prescribed, whether it can have sort of this broad-based appeal? Because sometimes when these drugs get approval, it's with all kinds of conditions and restrictions. And, and, and you're exactly right. That's actually very astute because that's exactly the case here. There were all these limiting factors that it had to go through. It had to have an MRI to actually that's prescribe right. yeah, it. I remember that. Um, it had to um, go through the process of gaining coverage. So all, all this was friction that exists in 2023. That will be alleviated in 2024. So you'll go from treating 500 patients to 10,000 patients next year. And ultimately, you know, there are 6 million people in North America suffering from Alzheimer's. But if you target 100,000 or 200,000, this becomes a $5, $10 billion drug. Dell Cath Systems is one of those in the smaller scale. What's yes. its treatment area and why do you think it has upside? Yes, it has the Hepsado kit. And what it does, it, it has a targeted delivery of a chemotherapeutic agent uh, to certain rare um, liver malignancies. Okay. And it's a tiny company. It's around 50 or $60 million. But it got, again, like Biogen, got FDA approval this year. Um, so there's a trade in biotech. It's so called... Is, okay, go, go. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's called short or sell the launch. And it's been amplified by how savage the spare market's been. So when companies get approval, they tend to fall 30% or so. 
In this case, these are falling 40, 50, 60, 70 percent, right? That's an opportunity. So the negative sentiment's creating an opportunity for companies like these. So, you know, it's going to be a slow launch, but given the valuation, it turns profitable in 2025. Does it survive until then? You know, would somebody come and, and buy it because of its, its focus on cancer, which where there has been um, a lot of M&A? So I think because this is more of a niche thing, I don't think it gets acquired. Okay. However, they have a unique financing structure where a lot, a lot of the existing institutional investors will pay at certain milestones and achievements. So that, that helps its, you know, its situation. Phantom is your last pick. What's the play? Yeah, I, I really like Phantom. So Phantom um, just got after approval and has started launching last week a drug that treats um, erosive esophagitis. So that is very excessive, chronic damaging um, liver acid, uh, sorry, uh, stomach acid secretions, oh, yes. right? And it's a huge market. So this drug, which was developed by Takeda in Japan, or mm -hmm. it's the biggest selling drug in Japan, $800 million, right? This is the biggest selling drug? Okay, yes. yeah. In Japan. Here in the US, it's best in class. It had numerous stellar phase three uh, trial results. Um, it's going to be a billion dollar drug by 2028, possibly more as certain indications expand and so on. And uh, so you put a 10 times uh, multiple on that, discounted back, you know, probably seven or eight times what its current price is. I mean, this stock has got no bit, even with the market bottom at the end Absolutely. of October, and it just continued to move lower. Absolutely. And part of that is all the uncertainty regarding the launch. Again, it's one of these that there's tremendous transparency and visibility, but you know, the market is concerned how much are they gonna burn and launch mm -hmm. a new drug and so on. But I, I think it's just a golden opportunity. All right, interesting.